Welcome back. This week we're going to tie Kelly Gallup's Silk Kitty. We're going to do this one in olive today. Uh, it's a little bit lighter of an olive than I, than I typically tie in fishermen. Uh, it's going to be more toward the... It, it's going to be a really light yellow, all, light olive, closer to the yellow. Um, when you compare it to the, like the sculpin olive that I typically like to tie these in. But um, we're going to go a little bit lighter on this one, like I said. Uh, to start on this one, it's an MFC 7050, uh, size 4 on the back hook. And then our front hook is going to be a 7008, size 4. This one is, the back hook's a 3X long, the front hook's a 4X long. So we'll go ahead and start on this one, gel spun 100 as always. Just get a thread base down here. And what do we got? Got some new jaws on the Renzetti there. It was, uh, oh, it's been through hell, this thing. The jaws were worn out, busted the tension screw in the back, and then this entire arm came out. Um, I don't know, I guess just way too many flies. And I'm pretty tough on things too, so. I put a lot of tension on these from time to time. So I guess just wear and tear over the years got to it. So we got basically a new vice here with all of the upgrades. Well, with all of the fixes. No more wobble or anything in it. So it's kind of nice. Take me a while to get used to that. So to start on this one, I'm just going to go with a yellow. Um, tail underneath and I'm going to measure this out about the length of the back hook. I'm going to set that on and then just get one wrap right over top and then really secure it in. We get our yellow sitting just how we want it there. Got one going a little rogue on me. I'm going to get a wrap underneath there and then we're going to take this one forward. On this pattern I would say the scalp and all of the white and probably the tan, the one that I tied a while back for a video uh, back before the multi-cam setup I did a I did a tan one and probably those three colors are my favorite on this. I uh, do also a black and purple, and then I'll just mess around with some different colors here and there. But those three are the main ones that I'll that I'll typically fish for, or tie and fish for the kitty. But really, any combination that you want to put together, this fly's going to hunt for you. Get that out of the way. Two strands of gold flashaboo. Typically on the olive, I like to go with copper, but I'm gonna have the body as a copper or a body, a gold body on this one. So I'm gonna stick with that theme throughout my tail and the flash on the skirt as well. Just gonna bring this over, four strands on each side, same as just about every single marabou plume tail that we tie. That's a little bit too long there. All right, now I'm gonna take some olive, and I'm actually gonna have a three-part tail on this. Typically, I don't. Um, typically, I would just go with the olive on the bottom and then I would put the the uh, toner on the top whether it be a chickaboo or whatever it may be I'll show you that step here after I get this on but this is going to be a three-part tail mainly because I wanted to get the yellow underneath on this olive I wanted just a little bit of yellow on there so 
Now we're going to go with an olive right over the top. Same thing, I'm going to run that down. Just build and bulk on this body. And then go ahead and trim that. I'm leaving a little bit here in the front because I'm going to put some lateral lines and then also some overwings on this as well. That might make a good overwing right there. Now this is going to be the last piece for the tail. This is just a, uh, oh, let's see here. This is a whiting. Let me make sure I get the name right. I was wanting to call it a chicken poop patch here. I'll pull it, I'll pull another one out of the, there we go. This is what we're looking at right here. Um, what do we got? We got a soft tackle with chickaboo in it. That's what we're, that's what we're looking at. Uh, these are excellent. If you've watched any of Kelly's videos, he has, um, he he speaks really highly of these, and you'll see in here. I mean, there's there's so many uses out of this thing, and it's it's really a, a cost effective um, purchase when you go buying this. When you look at all of the different things that you're able to do with this stuff. You get some short slopping in there, you get some soft tackle, you get some chickaboo, which we're using right here. And this stuff is all excellent. You go combing through those packs, they're, they're, you're lucky to, to get a couple flies out of one pack. Lucky. So now, I just want to tone this down a little bit. I want to add a little accent on that tail. And then it's going to be the same length as the other two. And you'll see that we wind up with a little barred section on our back right there. Just kind of roll that slightly. Everything looks good. I keep catching that dang hook. Now I want to form a dubbing loop here. And I'm going to put the body in. Get that. And now here's where we're gonna, man, the neighborhood dogs are going crazy. They're going crazy. I hope it's not picking up on the video too awful much. We're gonna just go with some gold um, iced up on this one. This is gonna be a really nice picked out body. Like if you look at this, it's almost like a chopped flashaboo. Um, or like a mix between angel hair as well. These have some longer fibers in it, which is what we want on this because you want the body to be picked out slightly, but you don't want it to really interfere with the back section because you want that back section to whip a lot. So you don't want it really catching a lot of other materials like your your lateral lines or your, your marabou, whatever it may be. So we're just going to take a look at this. One section right in the middle is a little sparse. I'm going to fix that up. Everything's looking pretty good right there. Now I'm just going to take and make sure that my very first wrap covers all the way around and it's not. I don't have any thread shown in that back there. And then just spin that right to the front. If you want, you can pick this out a little bit. It's up to you. Usually just picking it out by hand is going to be more than enough. Um, but if you want, you can run a dubbing brush through there or whatever it may be. So now I just want to clean up this head slightly. And we're going to go back to this patch here and we're going to pick our lateral lines out. When I used to, when I first started tying this pattern, uh, I would say probably up until about a year ago, I always try, tried to use these really thin, really sparse feathers for my lateral lines. And I did it with the Octobers too. And it just seemed like they got lost on the pattern, especially once it got wet. I started going with these thicker ones and it's 
it's night and day the difference that lateral line sticks out so much um, when when you're fishing these let me see here so we're just gonna pick these out here I think I had two set aside there we go I had two set aside that I wanted to use so we're gonna go with these right here so now I'm just going to peel this stuff back and then I want to measure this out. I want it going past my Marabou. Probably about right to the bend on the Renzetti is where I want this to go. This is this may be a little bit on the thick side. But, like I said, I've been liking these things to be a little bit thicker here lately. So that's what I've tended to work with more so than anything. This would be about the max that I would use right there. So now we'll go ahead and trim that off. Then we're going to just measure this one out. Make sure we've got the same length. Everything looks good. Just going to peel those fibers back and then take a little bit off of there. I'm going to try and catch some of those fuzzier fibers right there just so long as I have the overall length that I want everything looks good I'm gonna pinch that down to the side and then just secure those in place nothing real tight just yet nice and loose wraps all the way through here once I know that it's sitting how I want it everything looks pretty clean right there now all I want to do is just pull straight down get another couple of solid wraps, pull straight down, and that's really gonna tighten everything up. And as you can see over the top right here, our lateral lines are running nice and even through that. From the underneath side, you can still see the yellow, you can still see the tail, you got the body gold coming through right there. Everything's looking nice and clean for us. And we're just about ready to finish off this back flaw, or this back hook. Now, I'm going to take a stack of marabou here. This is just olive. And this one doesn't need to be perfect. If you have a, a piece of marabou that is a little bit off or maybe not perfect for a tail or an overwing, whatever it may be, this is a good spot to use it. And then I want it going back into the tail section. Of this of this hook so I'm gonna pull that forward just a little bit this can be a little bit shorter if you want to you can start it right at the tail we're gonna have that toner over the top this chickaboo is gonna marry right into this back section right there so now let's find another good piece here. Mm. This one will work. This looks pretty good. And using these patches right here almost eliminates the need to double up these feathers. Every once in a while you'll find one that's a little bit more sparse. Um, and you may need to double them up, but for the most part, these things are all good. One feather over the top is really all you need. Like I said, I have that other one under there for an overwing, or you know, just to add some bulk, just the straight olive. And then there we go, that's adding a little bit of bulk right there. There's our cover over the top. And if you look at this one, this gets wet. The reason that I started going with these big, thicker lateral lines, when this gets wet, this just looks like a mottled scalp and tail body, body and tail, I should say, going the entire way back. And it just marries in perfectly. It really does. Um, 
Obviously, this is gonna slick down a little bit when it's wet. It's not gonna hold that profile. But then your yellowtail, your body, everything comes through. Um, I really like the way the thicker fibers perform in the water. So now we'll just get a quick half hitch, or whip finish, sorry. There we go, got a nice clean eye. A couple of fibers sitting right there, not a big deal. Let's see here. Now we're just gonna take and touch up our thread. Just touch this up real quick. There we go. I got a little bit of a roll on that one, but overall it looks good there. All right, we're gonna go with our wire now. I'm gonna take this and then just two red beads. Mm, I don't like that one. I don't like that one either. There we go. We're going to take those two. Just kink that wire down for us. And then put our beads over. Get those two set in how we want them. And then get that off to the side for now while we prep this front hook. Like I said, it's a 7008, size 4. And just get a quick thread base down here, work that to the back, bring that back around. And then I want to take and put these eyes on. I almost always use yellow eyes anytime I tie olive. I, I just like the way that it, it looks. The red doesn't quite look good to me. I've tried orange in the past. It was okay. I almost always go with the, the yellow. It just looks good to me for some reason. So couple of quick figure eights around there. You can see the distance that we have from the eye to the eye of our hook. And then I just want to take just a little bit of zap here. Just barely touch this. And of course I'm going to get a little bit more than I bargained for. Find a junk marabou feather. Soak up some of that extra. There we go. Everything's looking pretty clean. Now we'll go to our back hook. Make sure that everything's running parallel. You got your two beads here. I got to move some wires around. There we go. Wires are running parallel. We're going to set this right on the side here. Just get a loose wrap until we get everything how we want it. Distance on our beads. I'm going to cut that distance down just slightly. I want it just just a little bit shorter than the width of those two beads. There we go right there. Make sure that everything's still running parallel on the back side. And we're just going to take these wires. And try not to glue my finger to the hook. One for one so far. Bring this back around. too short. There we go. There we go. 
All right, everything's doubled up how we want it. Now I'm gonna get this in the material clip, get that setting off to the side. There you can see the back half of our hook with the eye on the front. Now what we want to do is we're going to take three plumes of marabou on this. So I'm going to go one, two, uh, let me find a third. They don't have to be perfect either. I just want three plumes of marabou and before I go doing that um, I'm going to put in some extra flash on this. I'm just going to take three strands and I'm going to run this down the side about to the quarter way point on this back hook. I just want to run these into the back. And I've, I've done this both ways to where I've put the marabou in first and then I've, then I've put the flash in. Let me get rid of some of that. I don't need all of it. I like it with the flash. Oh, let me let me back that up. The tan and the white, the lighter colors. I like the flash on the outside for some reason. For this, I like it a little bit more of an internal flash. So the the darker colors, your blacks, your grays, your your olives. I'll put the flash as an internal, as opposed to external of the marabou feathers. So, there we go. We've got a couple strands of flash running through there. Let me peel this on the other side just so I'm getting things accurate there. And there we go. There's our flash running down the side there. Now I'm just going to take some marabou and we're going to build a skirt on this one. Lost it lost it like I was saying these feathers here do not have to be perfect um, if you have one that's a little bit beat up or whatever it may be this is a good place to use them I'm just going barely past the head on that back hook just barely past that thread and then I'm gonna work my thread here back to between the point and the barb of the hook. Now I can take this forward. We're going to wind up with quite a few here. We're going to wind up with four plumes of marabou, so we're going to wind up with a decent amount of bulk on this. Typically, you'll see me when I'm tying if it's like a tenant two or a rainbow riffle or dungeons or boogies, whatever it may be, you'll see me bust these tips up and I'll use like the stuff that's on the side for the marabou skirt. But for this one, I like these just a little bit more sparse. And it doesn't really interfere with the tail whip that you're that you're after on this. I'm going to leave that one there, see if I can run two of these back at once. There we go. Now this one's going to go over the top, just barely into that back chickaboo piece. And I want a couple of loose wraps before I start to really wrench down on these to get that marabou in place. And then I'm gonna work this to the front. There we go. It looks bulkier than what it is right now. There's a bunch of fibers and everything sticking out of this. It'll slick down here once we get these next couple of pieces on there. We're gonna go back to the chickaboo now and I want this running into uh, that one's twisted a little bit. I'll see if I can get away with using it. Let's see if it'll cooperate when it's on there. 
I think so. So now I want this one running back into about halfway back that piece of chickaboo that we used for the overwing on the back hook. Now we'll just clean this up with a few thread wraps. There we go. Once again, we'll look at the top of this. You can see that modeled effect that we have going the whole way back on this, even back into the tail, the original marabou tail that we tied back here. And then these lateral lines just accent that even further. We're gonna make a second dubbing loop here to form the body. on our front hook. Just set that right in place. Get that in the cradle. Same thing as before, we're just gonna take a chunk of this gold ice dub and we're gonna work this through the loop. I don't get real picky about it when I first put it in here. Once I, once I twist this up, that's when I'll try and manipulate that body a little bit to get rid of any uh, heavy sections or any that I feel are a little bit too soft those all look pretty good right there so now we're just going to take this once again make sure that you get that first wrap clean you don't have any exposed thread and then just work this down through loosen that up just a touch there we go work that up just right before your eyes. You're gonna have maybe an eighth of an inch gap on those eyes right there, or before those eyes. So now I just wanna clean this up a little bit, work my way back to where I'm gonna have some room. Pick that out once again. Everything's looking pretty good. And I forgot to get legs. Be back in a sec. just fly off without the legs. You know, I run through these materials out loud as before I turn the the camera on and everything. I'm like, yep, got that, got that. Nope. No legs. No legs this time. So thought I had everything getting forgetful I guess anyhow these are gold amber and black I use three of them I'm just gonna go one two take that right over the top pull down everything's out of your way everything's nice and clean now we're gonna put in and you can do this either way I tend to like to go with the legs first and then the marabou over top. If you want to go with the marabou and then the legs, that, that's entirely up to you. So now we're just going to make our last overwing section here. And for this one, I get a little bit heavier on the marabou that I'm using. You can see that's a little bit more or a little bit thicker than what I used on the first two overwings or the, the overwing and the skirt, I should say. I just want to run this right over the top. I'm running that into the chickaboo that I used for the skirt. Just a couple of loose wraps right there. It doesn't have to be perfect. A 
couple run running astray on me there. Now, if anywhere that you're going to need to double up, even with using this stuff from whiting, if there's anywhere that you're going to need to double up these chickaboo feathers, it's going to be right here. This is a little bit longer than what we've used previously, and we want a little bit more bulk through this. So, I'm going to find two that I like here, and then I'm going to find the best one, which would be this one right here, and I'm going to use that for my top feather. I'm going to see, I might not have to double this up, but it's already kind of looking like I'm going to have to. So I just want to get this one in place, get that set. All right, good. That one's kind of kicking off to the side a little bit, so I'm going to work this one. And that was on purpose. I should have should have said that as I was tying it in. I wanted it more on that side. This way I can run this one on my side but it's still going to be over top of it. I mean, it's just slightly canted, if anything. There's a little curve wanting to fight me there, but I think I got it. Really tighten that down. There we go. As you can see, all the way down, let me get that straightened out, all the way down, once that slicks down in the water, you're going to have that modeled effect the entire way back. And we're going to have a really nice clean look to the top of our fly. I'm going to take and cut those legs right now, get those out of the way. And then I'm going to cover everything up with a straw and then the last thing that we have here it's going to be building, get that out of the way, it's going to be building our wool head. So this is just some light olive from MFC, it's a little bit lighter than what I would really like it, but we're going to make it work. I'm just going to peel some of this stuff out. We're going to make it work here. Yeah. Not going to make that piece work. I didn't like that one bit. Alright, I'm going to run this through the comb here. If it will allow me. It's pretty, pretty bundled up there. I don't know if I like this stuff. Must have got a bad pack. I've used this stuff before, but never struggled with it this much. Yeah, this stuff's. Hmm. I've used this plenty before and never had this issue. I must have got a bad pack. Yep, look at that. Try from the opposite end here, maybe that'll help out a little bit. You want to clean this stuff out really well because if you go tying this in as a big clump, the way that it comes off of the rope there you're going to wind up having gaps throughout the entirety of this. I'm going to struggle through this and try and make it work here, but I don't know that this pack is going to make it past this fly, to be honest with you. So, I'm going to take this, I'm just going to double up this section right here. One, two, 
and I'm going to flip this side back, one, two, and that's going to stand up like that. I wonder if I can work through, nope. Now we're going to work on the bottom side. Like I was saying before, if you just take this clump right there without breaking this up and really getting all these fibers uh, that are intertwined, untwisted, it's going to wind up create. It's going to wind up making it very difficult to to form a head that doesn't have a bunch of gaps and everything in it. So I'm just going to have to take a little bit of extra time, clean a couple pieces, and put them together on this. Like I said, this is. This is rare here. I haven't run into this this issue with this material yet. I've had some pretty good luck with it. This stuff's just not cutting it. All right. Now we're going to take and just form your wedge right there. I'm going to go one, two, pull that down tight. And then I want to go behind the eyes yet again. This one's standing up in the back pretty, pretty high because I'm using this one as my collar. So what I'm going to do is, if you've watched me work with this Rams wool at all in the past, well, not the MFC brand, but any of the Rams wool patterns before, I always form a cone or a. Uh, section here to where it's like a little cone that goes back over everything and it really covers up the gaps and the eyes really nicely man what a pain if this head turns out even halfway respectable it's going to be a miracle I've never had this issue before. Alright. Back to what I was saying. I just form this little cone here. So I take some material and then I open this up. Just like that, I have a little open section there. I get coverage on the top and the bottom. I work that right around the eyes. I go one, two, and then peel all of that stuff back. And you can see, once I get my hand off of it here, that it laid that top section back for me really nice. Everything is really clean there now. What I want to do next is just work my way through in front of my eyes. Let's see if I can use some of this stuff that's coming off the comb. Maybe that'll work a little bit for me. There we go. That's actually all right there. Go ahead and peel that down. One, two. It's working all right, but it is not worth the frustration of dealing with this stuff. I know that much. There's the two. It is not worth the frustration. there so I'm just gonna bend this right around my thread here I'm gonna form this cup I'm gonna take that right underneath I'm go one two get a third and then pull down you can see the head starting to come into shape here I just want to put one more on the top 
and it doesn't have to be real heavy on that top thankfully because I'm not going to be able to get a lot of material here so let me just clean that up one last time right around there and we're ready to whip finish all right before you start the trim on this one get some of this junk out of there before you start the trim on this one Always take your bodkin when you're working with ram's wool or sculpting wool, whatever it may be, and just fluff this stuff out a little bit. Just run this right through here. It's going to wind up just looking like a big ball of fuzz. But this just ensures that you're going to get good coverage throughout the entirety. It's going to bust up any tangles that you may have left after running it through the comb or whatever you decide to run it through but there we go find the eye of your hook and then I just make a vertical cut right up the top I don't get real aggressive at all when I'm making these initial cuts I just want to make something that gives me the overall shape of a sculpin head. There you can see it's starting to come into shape already. We've got a decent amount of trimming left to do yet. This bottom section I usually cut just flat. You can see we've got good coverage under our eyes and everything. We're pretty clear right there. Just trim a couple of these longer hairs out of the way and then go back at this. I want to just flatten this out almost entirely on the bottom. Let me see how that looks right there. You can get a pretty good look at that actually where it's a nice just flush cut right there on the bottom. And now we have all of this stuff on the top that we want to work with yet that we still need to shape for our sculpting head. So now what I want to do is I'll just pull this out of the vise same thing that I always do with these, cutting against the grain makes it so much easier when you're trying to shape or fine tune your shape I should say. Get something that keeps a nice fat head because if you look at the sculpt and they have a really wide head on them. I'm going to keep my collar It'll be like the pectoral fins and everything right there. I got a couple pieces of the need to brush out a little bit there, but overall, that's about what I want for the shape. There's a couple more spots that I need to trim right there. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to peel. Now before I do that, I want to clear out my eyes. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. That head actually turned out half decent, even though the, the material was a struggle there for some reason. I must have had a bad pack. Don't know what happened to it there. But now we'll get this out of the way. Now what you can do as well, if you want to continue that modeled look the entire way back, let me get a couple of those feathers to lay better for me there and trim a little bit of this out. If you want let me find my rubber legs there, I'm missing one. I'm missing one somewhere. There's one, two, three. Oh, they're stuck together. 
That's what the problem was. They were stuck together. It's like, how in the world did I manage that? But, like I was saying before, I got distracted by the rubber legs. If you want to, what you can do, if you want to follow that modeled effect the entire way back, you can just take a Sharpie, a Pantone, whatever marker that you use, and you can just touch that head up and run it consistent with how that over how your overwings sit on the back it'll give you that consistent look throughout the entirety of it but I'm gonna save you the time on that one because I already had to go searching for rubber legs and I already had to struggle with the uh, wool head there a little bit but that is Kelly Gallops Silk Kitty and Olive. Uh, if you guys have questions or comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks as always for watching and we'll catch you next week.